Hi, everybody. I'm Dave from the Polypad team, and I'm excited to share with you our Polypad updates for March 2024. First update to share is a new tab in the sidebar. You can see there's a question mark right here that opens a tutorial section for every tile on Polypad. So for example, let me add a hexagon to the canvas, and you'll notice in the action bar, there is a question mark button. When I click that button, the sidebar will open a tutorial section all about that tile. So this section is all about polygons. You can see here there's a section on how to cut polygons. The tutorial menu is interactive as well, and so you'll, you'll notice when I hover over cut, Polypad will focus on that action in the action bar. So I can see exactly where I can find cut on that tile. There are times where we have embedded videos that will show you exactly how this action is performed. I'll pause the video. The other feature of the action bar is at times, the, the option being described in the tutorial menu might not be possible on the canvas. So as an example, this section on folding nets is not currently possible with the hexagon that I have on the canvas because I. I, I don't see fold net in the action bar. And so what's gonna happen here when I hover on fold net, Polypad will add a net to the canvas that is able to be folded. Watch this, here we go. I'm gonna hover on fold net and there that net got added and a focus on the button. And if I want to, I can click this button in the action or in the tutorial menu actually and uh, the net will become folded. Here we go. Oop. And this is a tile that I can use on the canvas. So all sorts of great information in the tutorial menu. We even have links to a number of ideas of how, how you could use this tile with students. Um, and this, this menu is a drop-down menu as well. So if you know you're looking for a specific uh, section, you want to learn about fraction bars, you could go to the fraction bar section. And again, as you explore this, um, this section on fraction bars, a fraction bar will get added to the canvas if you don't already have one on the canvas. So maybe you're um, maybe you are doing something with the balance scale, and so you're in the algebra section, and you're working with the balance scale. Let me zoom out a little bit, and you have a question about how the balance scale works, and you can't quite figure it out. Again, just go click on the tutorial section, or on the tutorial button in the action bar, and it will open up the section about the balance scale. Sometimes there'll be a link to a video on our YouTube channel. If you want to go back to the one about fraction bars, you could just go to the fraction bar and click that. Or at the top of the tutorial menu, there's a, there's a button that will take you to the last viewed page. So as opposed to having to go here and scroll to fraction bars, which isn't far away from the balance scale though, but you could just go here and hit last viewed and it will go to the fraction bars and then, um, you can read all about the fraction bars. At the beginning of the tutorial menu, there is more of an overview section around how to save and, um, and share polypads, all about authoring mode. So you can go explore that. And a what's new section. So because I'm in the what's new video, let's head over to the what's new section and talk about some of the other things that are new in March. Great, all right, the other new thing in March is the ability to edit values of tiles directly on the tile rather than having to balance them on the balance scale. So let me do, uh, let me show you that with algebra tiles. So if you've worked with algebra tiles in the balance scale, you may know that our x value or our x tile has a starting value of five. So you can see x balances with five and here uh, that's another x. So that's three of them. Let me copy the five. So there we go. That's three x's balanced with 15. And when I click on the x tile, I have, a few options here, negate it, split it. When I go into more tools, I could turn off the labels and change how I want to split it. But what's not available here is, is, the, is the ability to change the value of the X tile. Uh, and that's new in authoring mode now. So now I'm going to open authoring mode and click on the X tile. And you can see now there's this new section uh, of authoring and action visibility. I'm going to open the authoring section and you can see there's an input field where I can change the X value. So this is new. So if I change this X value to seven, this is no longer balanced. And I want to point out it's changed all the X tiles to seven, all of these on the canvas. And 
And if I go back to the algebra section and add a new x tile to the canvas, that will also be 7. And in fact, any tile that, any algebra tile that, that uses an x will also have an x value of 7. So this x squared, it shows me the x value of 7, right? So now I could, just to show you, I could leave authoring mode and balance a few of these. So what did I say? x was 7, so 3x's will be 21. There we go. An x squared should be 49. Let's make sure this balances with 49. Awesome, there we go, great. Uh, now, if I change the x value anywhere, right? So if I go into authoring mode and I change this, uh, let's make this three. Actually, let's let's make this 15 since I have a 15 on the canvas, right? So now that x squared, because x was 15, that's 225, but one x will be 15. And uh, there we go, that's balanced. Awesome, so that works with the algebra tiles. I was doing it with an x example, works the same with the y algebra tiles. You may notice on the balance scale, we have these weights. Uh, so there's the star. All of those have a starting value of one. I'm still in authoring mode, so you can see that has a tile weight. I could change this to 21. And then any star that I put on the canvas will have a value of 21. Oh, let me use 21. And again, this is, um, this is inside of authoring mode, so I could turn off authoring mode and then students aren't able to go in here and see the value of the tile. Uh, if you use Polypad inside of Activity Builder, students don't have access to the File tab, so they can't even go into authoring mode to turn it on to see the value of the tile. Uh, and there, there are links on our Getting Started with Polypad page about how to use Polypad inside of Activity Builder. The final piece I want to talk about with um, the balance scale here is uh, our polygons. So let me go back to the polygon section and add a hexagon to the canvas. And let me go into authoring mode. So just like um, the tiles above the balance scale, these have a tile weight of one. If I change this to 10, and let me just show you that this will balance with 10. I'll go outside of authoring mode and go to the number cards. So this will balance with 10. And if I add another, hexagon onto the canvas that will balance with 10 as well. So any changes to the tile weight inside of authoring mode of a polygon will impact all polygons of that, all tiles that are the same as, as that hexagon in this example. However, you may know inside of authoring mode, I can add a label onto polygon. So I could label this hexagon or something, and that's not going to change the uh, the weight, or the tile weight, but if instead of putting hexagon here, if I put seven, and I'm gonna just hit tab to get my cursor outside of the label input field, when I hit tab, what you'll notice is the tile weight input field is going to disappear. So I tab, see that's gone? Because now by entering a number into the label section, that has the same impact as changing the tile weight of this one specific tile. So you can see here that this is seven because I added a label onto that hexagon. Let me just grab seven. But this one is still 10 because I had set the tile weight of all hexagons as 10. Uh, and so now if I add a new hexagon to the, onto the canvas, that will also have a value of 10. It's just in this particular one where I went inside of authoring mode and I added a label of seven. I can make that bigger if I wanted to, right? Now, if I, uh, if I get rid of that label and hit tab, you can see now it, it has reset the value of that hexagon to 10 because there's this rule on this save polypad that all starting hexagons have a value of 10. Cool, so that's really helpful uh, to author a whole bunch of activities. Um, if you wanna learn more about the balance scale, just go right to the tutorial menu, and here's a section on using the balance scale, including a, um, a video on our YouTube channel. Let me go back to the what's new section. Just use the last feed button. Uh, we also added the ability to use the, the song or the action button in a song tile. 
I'm not going to demo that in this video, but I'll show you where you can learn more. Uh, you can add action buttons to canvases in Polypad that will uh, play music or roll dice or show or hide tiles. And so, of course, you can learn about that in our new tutorial menu. All the way at the bottom under authoring tools is a section on action buttons. So you could go here and read all about the different things you can do with, with adding a button onto the canvas. And what's new is you can put these buttons into a song tile. So if you want to play buttons in order, you could put them into a song tile and um, play those buttons. And the final thing for March is we are no longer showing the outlines of individual tiles when you group tiles. So let me just add a few tiles here. Uh, I'll do this one. And if I click and drag to select all of those and I group them, you can see now there's just a single outline around the entire group. Prior to this update, we had the outlines on the individual tiles and the group as well. And that doesn't look as nice as it does now with a single outline around the group of tiles. Let me leave authoring mode uh, and just go back to the tutorial menu for a moment. Um, I'm really excited about all the discoverability that this tutorial menu can provide to teachers and students as you, as you play around with this. If you have feedback or suggestions or improvement, please feel free to drop them in the comments of this video. Get in touch with us on any of our social media channels. We always love to hear from teachers and students with feedback, questions, suggestions, and more. Thanks very much for watching.